fragmentary and open to various interpretations. Fossil evidence of chimpanzee evolution is absent altogether. I agree. Do, uh, Dr. Uh, not Dr. Uh, Marvin Lubinow has a great book called Bones of Contention. If you want to study all of the so-called cavemen, that's the one I recommend. Or if you've got a friend going to school being taught anthropology about all the cavemen, if you want to save them from a lot of headache and learning false things, get them this book for a birthday present or something. Excellent gift to give to anybody you know going to college and learning all this junk about man coming from an ape-like ancestor. The only missing link I've been able to find is modern man. Something is missing between his ears. These guys spend all their free time digging in the dirt looking for bones. My dog did the same thing. <laughs> but we didn't make the taxpayers pay his salary while he did it. Mm -hmm. Florida has a law that requires textbooks to be accurate. So does California. So does Texas. So does Wisconsin. So does Alabama. Most states have laws requiring textbooks to be accurate. Minnesota has a law that says a teacher shall not deliberately suppress or distort subject matter. Yeah, sure. Hey there, fella. You betcha. Well, here's a textbook used in Minnesota, and it says that all of these ones in the circle here have been proven wrong, but they're still using them as evidence for evolution. They're lying to the kids. And they're calling, used to call modern man homo sapien. Today they're calling us homo sapien sapien. Wow, what does that mean? Well, sapien means wise. So today we're the wise, wise man. That's interesting. You know, the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, if you believe your ancestors were a monkey, you're a fool. There's no question that some of my ancestors probably swung by their necks, but none of them swung by their tails. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now, look, if you find a fossil in the dirt, all you know is it died. You don't know it had any kids. You sure can't prove it had different kids. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do? which is produce something other than their kind. Hey, did you know chimpanzees are still having babies? Why don't they make another human and let's watch it this time? Hmm? See, evolution only happens in the imagination, never in reality. Where does the Stone Age fit into the Bible? Well, I think right after the flood, people got off the ark and they faced a real hostile climate. Things had changed. Noah couldn't tell his grandson to go to the hardware store and get him a shovel. There were no hardware stores. You would have to make stone tools because that you can make pretty quick. It takes a while to dig the iron ore out of the ground and melt it down and make the steel tools. So meanwhile, you're going to starve to death. They probably had a Gilligan's Island situation for the first few generations. Just, you know, a lot of smart folks with not much technology. You'd have to rebuild civilization. So they would make stone tools. And there are cultures today still making stone tools. I think during the time right after the flood, there would be an ice age lasting for several hundred years. We cover that on video six. During that time, people would wander around following herds of animals, and you don't want to carry a pile of rocks with you. So you wait till you catch up with the herd, and then you make your tools right on the spot. You kill the animals and leave the tools behind. You follow the herd someplace else. That way you're not carrying 50 pounds of rocks with you. It's quicker to make a new one after you get there. So a lot of times they find these crude looking instruments and they'll say, wow, this is a this is an older society. No, these people are in a bigger hurry. That's what it means. And if they have really neat looking arrowheads, they probably had more time to sit there and shape them. Nothing to do with intelligence. But not only were the people living longer before the flood, animals were living longer also and growing much bigger, I believe. This is a hornless rhinoceros, 18 feet tall. Some people say, oh, that's a prehistoric animal. No, there's no such thing as prehistoric. Did you know that word was added to the dictionary about 100 years ago? I got some old dictionaries and looked up prehistoric. 1766, it wasn't there. No such thing as prehistoric. I got a dictionary from 1860. There was no prehistoric in there. There's no such thing as prehistoric. You see, there are things that are pre-flood, but that's not prehistoric. Pre-flood, things were different. I think there was a canopy of water that increased air pressure which would make animals grow much larger, especially insects. See, insects are limited today on how big they can get based upon the fact that they don't have enough air to breathe. They breathe through their skin. Insects that grow in oxygen-rich waters grow a thousand times heavier than their counterparts just because they can grow bigger and f they have more oxygen. See, insects breathe through their skin. If an animal increases in size, its surface area to volume ratio drops off. 
as an animal gets smaller in size, the surface area compared to the volume increases. So insects that breathe through their skin simply can't get huge today. And yet fossil insects are found that are huge, like this dragonfly with a 50-inch wingspan. How'd you like to run into that at 70 miles an hour? <laughs> you take the bug deflector and the windshield right off, right? You guys have cockroaches here in Wisconsin? You should come to Florida and see ours. We raised some in our museum. If you want to come down to our science center, hold one of our Madagascar hissing cockroaches, they get pretty good size. But did you know fossil cockroaches have been found that are 18 inches long? You didn't call Orkin in those days, you called the National Guard. <laughs> fossil centipede was found in Germany eight and one half feet long. That's a big centipede. Fossil grasshoppers have been found two feet long. You could eat them puppies. <laughs> Fossil tarantula, three foot leg span. Fossil cattails have been found 60 feet tall. Fossil donkey found in Texas, nine feet high at the shoulder. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Fossil buffalo horns have been found, indicating buffalo used to get huge. Show me home where that buffalo roams. I'll show you a wreck. Deer antlers, 12 foot span. Some of you hunters are thinking, wow. <laughs> How many folks here go try to shoot Bambi's daddy? Come on now, let me see. There we go. And eat them too. Amen. All right, good. <laughs> Kangaroo fossils have been found that are 10 feet tall. Wombats, the size of a mini little car. They found in a prehistoric goose stood as tall as an elephant and weighed half a ton. That's a big goose. Fossil beavers have been found eight feet long. Right here in, in Wisconsin, a guy found the beaver jaw uh, over in Johnson Creek, Wisconsin. I met the guy, there's his phone number, Jim Herb. He said, yeah, that beaver would have been seven or eight feet long. That's a big beaver. In Ohio, a six-foot beaver skeleton was found. I think before the flood, the trees were bigger, which means you need bigger beavers to chew them down. <laughs> Probably just about everything was bigger back in those days. Salamanders got six feet long. Greater air pressure from the canopy would also increase the amount of oxygen getting into the water, which means now more fish can survive because fish have to breathe air underwater through their gills. Well, increasing air pressure diffuses more gas into the water. A shark here, I'm holding a shark's jaw that I got in Hawaii. That shark was probably about 12 feet long. If a tooth of a shark is one inch long, the shark was about 15 feet. It's kind of a rough average, depending on species, of course. I've got a replica here on the table of a fossil shark's tooth, indicating sharks before the flood probably got 80 feet long. Now, the movie Jaws had a 25-foot great white Folks, you'd have to use jaws for bait to catch a Carcharodon megalodon. I think things were a little bigger before the flood. Much bigger, actually. Carl Baugh in Texas is raising piranha in a pressurized chamber with increased electromagnetic field, trying to simulate pre-flood conditions. His fish are getting four times the size of normal. Call him up or go, so go visit his place in Glen Rose, Texas. If you're ever driving across Texas, you might as well stop because there's nothing else to see as you drive across Texas. Turtles got to be huge. That's a big turtle uh, on the left. <laughs> Oyster shells were found in the top of the mountains in Peru, two miles above sea level. So many oyster shells were 11 and a half feet wide. 500 petrified oysters. You should see the pearls. Now, did you know petrified clams in the closed position are found all over the world. I've got one here on the table. These kind are found on top of Mount Everest. I would like to point out, Your Honor, Mount Everest is a little ways from the beach. Secondly, clams do not climb mountains very well. <laughs> Thirdly, when a clam dies, it opens. You can walk along the beach and find a million seashells. You hardly ever find a matched pair. The only way to get one closed and petrified would be to have him buried alive. Now, I don't think the water was over Mount Everest. I think Mount Everest was under the water. 
big difference. Psalm 104.